Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. First of all, uh, I'd like to say sorry for the state of my voice at the moment. Uh, one of my wonderful children have passed on their cold uh, and it's affecting everything. The whole world seems to be dropping out my nose at the moment, so I do apologise. Now, what I've got here is a nice piece of cherry which has been set at the side of my lathe for the last six months and I've been using it as a step to get up to the, that camera there because I don't have a lot of room so everything's kind of fairly well packed in in the workshop. Uh, so anyway I've decided to use this because I want to do something I've never done before and I need a piece of wood similar to this to do it on. Now it's not a great piece of wood as you can see we've got rot in the wood here and I think that's the end of it there. So it does have a few faults. What it'll look like inside, I'm not completely sure, but this is more of a test piece than anything else because I'm wanting to try and experiment and do something, uh, like I said, I've never tried before. So the first thing to do, this is gonna be a vase shape. So we're gonna get it between centers uh, and turn it around. I'm gonna, I think this, because this is the least amount of rot here, I think that's gonna be the bottom. Uh, I know it's going to waste this big piece of wood here, but we don't have many ways about it. With that rot on this side, uh, we may, it may go in, well, it's going to go all the way through, get gra getting gradually less as we go in. So as this is a vase, it's going to be hollowed out. So hopefully we can take it out as much as we can and we can get away with this a little bit at this end. So I'm going to get it between centers, turn the ten on this end, turn it round create the shape, hollow out, and then we'll start messing around. Well, not messing around. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll go with messing around. <laughs> right, let's get started. Okay, right, we're between centers. We're pretty well balanced and we're going to be starting at around, I think, just under 800 RPM. Now, if you watched uh, the episode last week, uh, I had a very, very annoying rattle, which I thought was coming from my chuck, and I've just realised it isn't. The, uh, the rod I used to take out the drive spur was still in the end, and that is what was rattling. So I am very happy I found the cause, so I can start turning. Right, I've sharpened up. As I say, we're... we're starting at about uh, just short of 800 rpm i've got a half inch bowl gouge to start off with and i think the first order of business is to get rid of this lump here and then we'll start taking the whole thing around and create a tenon on this end It's going well. I've just quickly stopped to put a glove on this hand because some of the bark and bits flying off are a little bit painful. And I'm also going to swap over to a roughing gouge. This is the Record Power one inch roughing gouge just to help me get this all down nice and quickly. That was nice, quick and easy. Now, the bit that's rotten is there, and I can't see any signs of it on the surface, which is good. We do have a split here, uh, which we should be able to turn away. I may start the vase a little bit higher up just to make sure we can get rid of those areas. So I'm just gonna quickly start turning down this area and create this tenon. Now we're a lot more balanced. I've, the speed is up to just over a thousand. RPM. Okay, that is going quite a long way. So I'm just going to quickly take out a skew and start peeling that back and see if we can work past it. 
or whether or not we've got to come a lot further up. Okay, so we've got past that split. It's a tiny one there, but don't think that's going to give us any issues. We've got plenty of wood there for the tenon. That's excellent. Right, let's quickly measure that to get the right size, and then I'll sort that out. turned around it's looking good uh, we've got this you can see there the rotten bit and that's hopefully all going to be inside and cut away when we start hollowing it out now I have a little bit of room to play on the edge here so I want to create a slight curve in and then for about there curve it down to the base so very gentle curve this isn't going to be uh, an overly extravagant vase on the outside until we start playing around with it later on. Now we've got this brown bit here, which is the remains of the bark. So I do need to remove that and on that side as well. So I'll quickly get on with that, get a shape I'm like, and then we'll hollow out and then we can have some fun. shape coming together nicely. I've still got this bark area here. That's looking good. I think I need to be a little bit narrower at the base. So I'll keep on working on that while we're trying to clear this area as well. I'm just going to quickly go and sharpen up again. Looks excellent. Right, I just want to flatten off the top a little bit. Just take a, a peeling cut with a skew down here because I want a better look at just underneath that. See how it looks. And then I think I'll quickly sand this outside and then hollow it out. see it's, uh, it's still all there so we need to get rid of it right I'm just gonna quickly give a cursory sanding to the outside it won't it's not gonna take much uh, shall I let you watch some I'll tell you what, I'll film it anyway and if I decide in the editing that uh, I need to let you watch it then I will do otherwise I'll see you in a second okay I'm just gonna quickly take off this little knob here before I uh, start to hollow out. We've got it on the steady rest just to make sure that we're completely safe and this thing isn't going to come flying off. Right, I just went in there with a little spindle gouge just to take a little hollow out just so it sits nice and square in there. We've got the force and a bit ready to go in. I'm going to take it in to about there. Uh, I'm going to go in with this size first and then I'm going to open it up with a slightly larger size. Okay, 
that all went well. Uh, now we've got to start opening up this hole to try and get us past this rotten bit. Now when I was doing the hollow form last week, one of the tools that I found most effective was this uh, Chinese uh, carbide. So the main reason I'm going to use it again is because it's got a really nice long handle. So I can keep a lot of stability when I'm right down at the bottom. So we'll, keep, we'll start off with this. I may change into something else, but uh, we'll get there in the end. getting better at this hollowing out lock. The, uh, the first tool I showed you, the Chinese one, was brilliant at the start, but as soon as uh, I started getting in much deeper than that, then I was getting an awful lot of vibration. I think the handle's too light on that for it to be very safe uh, at greater depths. Uh, I moved over then to the, uh, the Hope deep hollowing tool. Uh, this is, when you get the hollowing tool, you just get out. you get this tool with two of these rubber grips on and that's pretty good but I put on the extra long handle as well which is solid and it gives you an awful lot of stability and an awful lot of weight to be able to get in there and feel safe doing it also having a tool rest that you can get in nice and deep as well to keep it firm really helps at the end I was just using a, a, a box scraper just to even out the walls and that hasn't done too badly at all. I've got a couple of little ripples. I'm not too unhappy with that at all. Right, uh, I'm gonna quickly sand over this little bit and then I shall bring it back and we can start the fun bit. We're all sanded up, everything's out of the way. Now we're gonna create a pattern in here, but in a kind of localized area. So to help guide, I'm just gonna put some tape on the side here and mess around with the shape a little. Try to put a subtle curve in here to give me a guide as to where I'm cutting. Okay, that's uh, not a bad curve. So I can do the opposite to that now. Okay. As I say, this is a test piece, so I'm not going to know exactly what looks brilliant and what doesn't look brilliant until we, we actually give it a go. So, now this is the area here that we've marked out where something's going to happen. Now I'm just going to put a bit more tape on either side of this just to... Actually, no, I don't need to. Right, this is where something is going to happen. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a, one of my cut saw bits and start creating almost like a cell-like pattern in here. Now what I mean by that is, rather than just squares or just circles, I'm trying to create squares of an odd shape in here, and I'm going to cut them all out, or hollow them out. So. It's going to be something like that. Whether or not I actually follow these lines or not, I'm not sure. But we'll, uh, we'll see as we go along. I suppose one way to look at it is a bit like a stained glass. about ready. I'm going to be using the same round bit as I used on the uh, the oak vase. 
Uh, I've put the spindle lock on, which will hold this steady. I'm going to be wearing safety specs and a face mask as well, and I'll put the extraction on. So it's going to be a bit noisy, but we'll see how we get on. I've got a slightly finer bit if I feel I need a bit more accuracy, but we'll see, see how it goes. Okay, that was a lot of fun. Now, the indentations left by the cut saw, they're a little bit rough in places. So I'm just gonna quickly try some of these uh, little sanding burrs. I'm not quite sure exactly what they're called. Just to see if that'll smooth it out a little bit. If not, then we'll find another solution, but uh, let's just quickly go over with these and see how it works. with the way that's come out. It's really starting to look quite uh, quite funky, for want of a better word. Right, now, when we come to finish this, I want to have a different colour uh, or pattern or something inside of all of these dips. So while I've got this tape on, I think I'll put a bit more on as well. I just want to put a bit of uh, something in these dips that will really stand out when we work on the rest. I did consider burning, but I don't think this time, although that's certainly a, a possibility for the future. Okay, I've got a quick drying gilders polish here, which I'm just gonna apply with a sponge and get it into all these dips. The sanding burr I used after the cut salt bit has left a, a wonderful texture on the surface in these dips. Almost organic. I really like that. I'm going to go over this twice just to make sure there's good coverage. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I'll come back in a couple of minutes and put another coat on, and I should bring you back when that's done. Okay, let's have plenty of time to dry. So let's take this tape off. Okay, excellent. Okay, now I'm just gonna sand again. Uh, I'm gonna go over with a nice light sandpaper, and hopefully, as I go over here, it'll leave the bare wood that can be seen between one of these little dips. That's the idea anyway. There we go, excellent. Right, now we could just put a finish straight on top of this. Maybe a, a shellac to darken it a little bit. Or we can add another color just to darken it an awful lot more, which may make these gold areas show up just that little bit nicer, show up a little bit more. So I think, yeah, let's give it a go. Right, now I was gonna do it black, 
but I don't have very much left in there. So what's left in there, I'm just going to mix in a little bit of purple and cross my fingers that it covers out a reasonable colour. Not too much. <laughs> this is where I suddenly realise I've made a heck of a mistake. It's not too bad. I think I'll send this back once it's on. Just so the colour kind of sticks in the grains. And I'll make a judgement call when that's done. I'm not going to colour the inside. That's quite nice. Right, I'm going to sand off the top. Give this a little while. Okay, uh, give this a little while to dry. And then we'll put a finish on, I think. I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're ready to put a finish on. Now, there's been a little bit of a gap between letting this dry and putting the finish on because I had a leak in my roof. Uh, luckily, most of it went down there, but uh, it was a little bit worrying for a while. But anyway, I managed to sort it, so now we can carry on. Uh, one thing I did do was I just went in with a little brush and put a little bit more gold on these areas just to help it shine a little bit more. Now, to start off, I'm going to apply a sealer and I'm going to use a cellulose sand in sealer. I don't I haven't used this very much recently because it's uh, it's although it's a fantastic sealer, it's not classed as food safe, so it's not ideal for anything you would want to use for food, but it's going to be perfect for this product. We can buff this in to dry it, we don't have to let it dry naturally. I'll do the inside separately because uh, it does take off a little bit of the colour as you're putting it on. So I'm not going to use the same cloth for the inside. Okay, I'll just buff that in. That's good. Right, I'm going to put a second coat on this and a coat on the inside as well. Uh, and then I'm going to cut it back with an abrasive paste. I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, for the final finish, I'm going to make up a, a shine juice. And that just needs a little bit of shellac in a pot. And then I'm going to add in some boiled linseed oil. Now, I'm using it this way because I've had to make a hole in the top because I couldn't get the lid off. About 50% of each, we'll mix that together and then we're going to apply it straight away and then buff it in as it's spinning. And this should hopefully give it a nice high shine. Right, start off slowly and build at the speed. nip off the tenon and we'll take a look at what we've done. There we go, one experimental pattern on the cherry vase. And an awful lot of positives we can take from this and an awful lot of uh, lessons we can learn. Uh, now when I carved this initial pattern all of these dips were right up to, up to each other which is the kind of style I wanted for but I didn't envisage having to do so much sanding afterwards, which is why they're all quite separate now. Now that in itself is quite a nice pattern. Nothing really necessarily too wrong with that, but it wasn't quite what I was going for. Uh, I think in future, if I was to try this again, and I will be trying it again, uh, I'll finish the vase completely, polish everything, and then do the pattern on it. So there's no more sanding to do apart from a little bit of localized sanding in this area. And that should hopefully keep these patterns an awful lot more uh, joined, as it were. But apart from that, it's not too bad. The shine juice has given us a beautiful shine on this. Uh, my coloring, as usual, isn't brilliant, but I will struggle to get better, I promise. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, 
and uh, I really appreciate a like and a thumbs up and all that usual kind of thing. And if you uh, leave a comment as well, then you're going to be entered into the giveaway, which is happening in a few days' time when we're giving away the 25,000 subscriber bowl. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.